as we have seen in the previous lectures that the various reasons for the existence of quantum mechanics and the failures of classical physics and failures of classical physics was uh, uh, due to uh, there, there are so many reasons for the uh, for these cases right so some of the reasons where uh, the classical physics was failed to explain as we have seen in our previous classes and we have, uh, as we have seen in our previous section uh, previous sessions that one of the reason was the black body radiation right so the black body radiation spectrum uh, was uh, proposed by planck's theory was proposed by mr planck and who assumed that the atoms of the walls of the black body acts as an electromagnetic harmonic oscillators right and uh, so the uh, an oscillator an oscillator because uh, we are telling about the a uh, black body acting as an harmonic oscillator so an oscillator can radiate energy oscillator can radiate energy only in the energy of quantum energy that is e equals to n h nu where n is an integer when is an n is any positive integer which has a value uh, which has a value integer or zero value right an integer where n is a positive integer or zero and nu is a frequency and h is a planck's constant and this planck's constant uh, planck's constant has a value as h equals to 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 27 yes per second it is a constant value and moreover a new new is a frequency frequency of the uh, incoming radiation right so new is written as new equals to c by lambda where c is the velocity of light and lambda is the wavelength of the incoming radiation wavelength of the radiation right right so so that is what we are telling an oscillator can radiate energy only in energy in energy with the quantized energy right with quantized energy that quantized energy is what we call it as e equals to nh nu where n is a positive integer and nu is a frequency and h is a planck's constant right and the room uh, and the remaining two phenomena and the remaining two phenomena were explained by einstein right so remaining two phenomena the remaining two phenomena in the sense as you have seen uh, because there are so as we have uh, as we have seen that there it was a challenge of uh, classical mechanics right so these challenges of classical mechanics were overcome by uh, some uh, were overcome by quantum mechanics and the overcome of this quantum mechanics was uh, was explained was explained that means where the quantum theory has failed quantum the where sorry where the classical theory has failed to explain is about by uh, is uh, where uh, classical theory explain uh, classical theory has failed to explain is about the black body radiation and uh, black body radiation photoelectric effect stability of the atom uh, and some part and some light features like interference diffraction and polarization so that's what the remaining two phenomena the remaining two phenomena were explained by einstein right and compton and compton by assuming that radiation itself radiation itself in particular light radiation itself in particular like consists of particles consists of particles called photons right each photon each photon is compromising energy is possessing energy e equals to h nu right so when this energy is quantized we can write it as e equals to n h nu as we told where n is a positive integer h is a planck's constant and nu is a frequency of the solar radiation so that is what uh, that is what these people have proposed it. so as we told so these are the people who was einstein einstein this is your einstein photoelectric effect and this is a person who is a uh, who is a concerned for the photoelectric effect so this einstein in 1905 albert <coughs> einstein explained the photoelectric effect for which he got nobel prize in the year 1921 and similarly and uh, another scientist by name ah compton earned the nobel prize in the year 1927 for the discovery of the compton effect right so that is what uh, that is what the remaining two phenomena which were explained by einstein and compton by assuming that radiation itself in particular uh, consists of particles called photons and each photon will possess energy h right so what is what, in this, uh, so this is what the uh, explanation we can give the interaction of light with matter right so interaction of light with matter can be explained by photoelectric effect compton effect right compton effect right and planck's theory maxima planck's theory of radiation so this is what the interaction how the interaction is associated with matter right the interaction of light with matter so as we know that and so ancient photoelectric effect photoelectric effect in the sense if you take a metal right if you take a metal if you take a metal right if you take a metal and if you impart some energy if you impart some photo energy right the electrons uh, the process of liberation of electrons the process of liberation of electrons that is what you can see here so this is what you can see here the process of liberation of electrons from the surface of light from the surface of a metal when light of certain frequency right when light of certain frequency if you take this is your metal and when light of certain frequency h nu 
falls on this metal, then liberation of the electrons will take place from the surface of the metal. Right? The liberation of the electrons, the liberation of electrons will take place from the surface of the metal. Right. So that phenomena is what we call it as photoelectric effect, where the electron, after becoming, uh, after it gets liberated from the surface of metal, gets free electron, and that electron will be converted into work function. The, uh, we can calculate the work function of the electron by using this photoelectric effect, which is proposed by Albert Einstein. Right. So this is what the photoelectric effect. What is the fundamental case? That that is what when a light of certain frequency falls on the metal sub, falls on the metal, then the liberation of electrons will takes place from the surface of the metal. So this is what you can see in case of uh, this is what you can see in case of photoelectric effect. Right? So the electrons liberating from the surface. And similarly, if you go for the Compton effect, Compton effect is one of the essential cause. It is also one of the essential cause for the existence of quantum mechanics. Right. So the Compton effect is nothing but the effect. It's, uh, it, it, it is related to the electron liberation, electron liberation from the surface of the metal. Right. So this is also when light of certain frequency. This is our main concept, the main theme is proposed by Einstein, right? So these are the uh, various phenomena where the classical physics has become the cha where the cha where ca challenge has where the classical physics has got a challenge where it cannot be proved, right? And later people started migrating over to the quantum mechanics, right? So this is what uh, uh, the Compton effect and uh, and Compton effect as a Compton effect is also essential cause for the existence of quantum mechanics, right? So, so another name, another uh, when after the existence of these two, after the existence of these two, that interaction of light with matter, that is by photoelectric effect and Einstein effect, and uh, photoelectric effect proposed by Albert Einstein and Compton effect, right? So proposed by quantum, uh, and another scientist by name uh, Prince Louis G Victor de Broglie, right? So de Broglie has started giving a, a dual nature, uh, as a giving the dual nature, right? So, started giving the dual nature. Light has a dual nature, right? So, light is having some dual nature, right? So, light has a dual nature, sometimes exhibiting the behavior of waves and sometimes it behaves the characteristics of particles. Like, like, so that is what light in the form of radiation has some dual nature, right? So, light will behave as a light. It is not, we call it as wave particle duality. So, what we call it as wave particle duality. What we call it as wave particle duality right so wave particle duality that is what light has a dual nature sometimes exhibiting the behavior of waves that means the particle sometimes behave as waves and and sometimes it behaves as particles that means that is what the duality right dual nature so this dual nature of radiation was proposed by Louis D. Broglie. so that's what we told light has a dual nature sometimes exhibiting the behavior of waves so light sometimes behaves as a waves and sometimes it behaves like a particle. So that is what the dual nature. So based upon this particular issue or based upon this particular point, right, proposed by De Broglie, that is what the dual nature of radiation, dual nature of radiation, which is proposed by Lewis De Broglie, right. So during the discovery, during the discovery in the year 1923, though. The discovery made by Einstein in 1905 should be generalized by extending all material particle, material particles, material particles like electrons to, to this particular behavior. That means light behavior, light having a dual nature, sometimes exhibiting the behavior of waves, right? And sometimes it behaves as particles, right? Radiate light in the form of radiation. Sometimes it behaves as waves, sometimes it behaves as particles. So this generalized phenomena proposed by Einstein should be generalized to material particles also. That is what material particle in the sense the force, the force, uh, the most fundamental particles of material is what we generally consider called the electrons. That's why during the year 1923, the discovery made by Einstein in 1905 should be generalized. Right? Should be generally, generally, right? It should be generally, and by extending all all to the material particles, notably to electrons. Then uh, a scientist by name Louis D. Broglie, that is D. Broglie. By name D. Broglie, he's a French scholar, right? He's a French scholar. By D. Broglie, extended the idea of duality of light to the duality of matter. Extended the idea of duality of light to the duality of matter, duality of matter, because the interaction of the, there was an interaction between the light and matter, where the photoelectric effect, Compton effect, and and uh, uh, other uh, Compton effect, photoelectric effect, same way. So these are the um, uh, Planck's theory, right? So where all these 
have been established with the interaction of light with matter right so interaction of light with matter so, so these people started extending the idea that means uh, de broglie started extending the idea proposed by uh, einstein to a uh, to particularly to electrons so he that is what he told that uh, einstein made in 19 what should be generated by extending it to all the material particles and notably to electron right so Mm, uh, so uh, so that is what we call it as a wave particle duality so it is what we call it as wave particle duality right so the wave particle duality is a fundamental property the fundamental property of matter that is what we are telling interaction of light with matter where it sometimes behaves as a wave sometimes it behaves like a particle right so light in the form of radiation sometimes at one moment it appears like a wave and at other moment it acts as a particle that means electron electron when we consider this idea to an electron electron sometimes it behaves as a wave sometimes it behaves as a particle right so this is what uh, this uh, this is what we, we understand the proposed by uh, proposed uh, theory by lewis de broglie so this proposition of uh, this proportion uh, this uh, the idea behind the de broglie he uh, got is behind the behind that uh, behind an idea behind it. he got an idea uh, that uh, which he got the nobel prize and he started uh, initiating about the wave particle duality is by taking a small uh, quotation like nature loves symmetry nature loves symmetry nature loves symmetry so this is what he has got the idea so that is what he has proposed so wave particle refers to the fundamental property of matter where about one moment it appears like a wave and at other moment it acts like a particle so to understand what is the difference to understand the wave particle duality it is we need to understand what are the differences between particles and waves right we need to understand what are the differences between particles and waves right so the basic difference a particle see, so we to understand the differences between particle and waves uh, to understand the differences uh, between the particle and waves we need to understand uh, this difference of particle between uh, this differences between particle and waves can be understood by taking the characteristics under view right so that is what the concept of particle is easy to grasp right when we study about the particle because the because a particle has certain characteristics like a particle has some mass it can be located at one definite point the particle can move from one point to another right so uh, it gives the particle gives energy when stopped down or when uh, when 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 it is slowed down or stopped down it gives it imparts some energy and moreover the parameters where the particle can be possessed or or its mass as i told you its velocity momentum energy right so these are certain parameters where the particle can possess right so if you see this the particle so that's what uh, this particle is specified by some parameters like mass velocity momentum and energy so from the above facts it is appears it appears difficult to accept the conflicting idea that radiation has a dual nature that is radiation is a wave that is what we are telling radiation is a wave which is spread out over space and also a particle which is located at a point in space right if you see the same comparison with a wave a wave the characteristics of a wave so the uh, what are the if we if we if we if 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 signify the characteristics of a wave right a wave is having certain parameters like frequency wave can be uh, specified a wave can be specified some frequency it will have some wavelength it will have some phase of wave velocity it will have some uh, particle velocity group velocity phase velocity group velocity it has some amplitude it has some intensity that means these are the some of the characteristics of a wave a wave is specified by frequency wavelength and wave is having some wave velocity and it has some amplitude it has some intensity so that's what the concept of wave is more is a wave is a bit more difficult than that of a particle right so a wave is spread out over a relatively large region of space a wave is spread out over a relatively large region of space it cannot be located at certain point right it cannot be located at certain point that means the wave cannot be positioned at one point that means we cannot find the exact position and momentum of a wave so that's why if, if we are not able to find the exact position and momentum of a wave we cannot think about if we cannot think of a mass for being a wave if we cannot think of a property for a if we cannot think of for a property of mass as a property of a mass for a wave that's why we wrote it is hard to think of mass being associated with a wave 
and wave is a disturbance that propagates through space and time usually the transfers of energy the transference of energy right so that's why we are that's why this wave is processed by some frequency wavelength phase of velocity amplitude and intensity right so particle so that's what the differences we can understand between the particle and the wave in particular we can write particle uh, we can signify the differences between particle and a wave based upon their characteristics right based upon their characteristics so a wave a particle has some mass it has some velocity it has momentum of course it has some energy Similarly, a wave is processing by some parameters like a wave is ha having some frequency, it has some wave number, it has some wave velocity and at the same time it has some amplitude and it has some displacement, uh, it has some intensity. So the maximum displacement, see if you come to, if you, if, you, if you need to understand what is an amplitude of a wave, so the amplitude of a wave is nothing but the maximum displacement travelled by the wave. So if maximum displacement are travelled by the wave in the sense, if you take this is your wave, right if you take this is your wave right so this is your maximum displacement of the wave so this maximum displacement is what we call it as amplitude this is what we call it as amplitude so amplitude is nothing but the maximum displacement traveled by a wave so this is what the plus a and this is minus a for amplitudes in the positive direction and negative direction that's why we told from above facts it appears difficult to understand to accept the conflicting idea that radiation has a dual nature that is radiation is a wave which is spread out over space and also a particle which is located at a point in a space right so if you see if you, if you can understand something behind this uh, slide behind this uh, part right so so these are nothing but the waves waves propagate like this these are the properties these are the waves which are propagating in this direction right and these are the particles so, so these are the particles which propagate like this so these are the so waves this is a, what the basic difference you can understand between the waves and particles so those are the waves and these are the particles right see if you, if you try to if you try to uh, if you if you try to source a light if you try to source a torch right so this is what the uh, <coughs> wave characters we get and this is what the uh, particle nature we get particles will be obstructed by barrier whereas wave has less time to distribute right in life we wave has less intensity we, wave will have intensity but when compared to this the particles can propagate in much direction here in this phase so this is what if you, if, you, if you see this figure we have some particles right so this is these are waves wave can wave wave has a lot of disturbance right we have a lot of disturbance that is what in physics in 1900 people started giving about the differences between particles and waves particles are quantized particles can be quantized that is what the reason why we took energy is quantized right energy is quantized that is what we write and e equals to n h nu where is what we write here e equals to n h nu right where n is an integer it is a blank constant and nu is the frequency of the radiation that means energy is quantized and at the same time the particles the particles can be localized the particles can be localized and particles cannot exhibit diffraction and at the same time they cannot exhibit interference right so what do you mean so if you understand interference interference is nothing but the superposition of two light rays so anti particles cannot be interfered and they cannot be diffracted and particles can move through empty space at any space at any speed right so that is what the interference we are telling that particles can particles cannot exhibit interference because interference is the resultant interference is a phenomena where we can understand the superposition of two light waves superposition of two light waves superposition of two light waves in the sense the two light waves should be displaced the displacement of two waves if you take y1 is the displacement of one wave right and if you take y2 is the displacement of another wave then superposition of the two waves can be written as y equals to y1 plus y2 the algebraic sum of the displacement we can write the algebraic sum of the displacement it gives rise to interference and the bending phenomena of the light is what we call it is the diffraction that's why particles are quantized particles can be localized and particles cannot be diffracted and for our particles do not exhibit interference and particles have a property that it can move, it can move through empty space at any speed. At the same time, if you see the sum of the differences, waves, if you see, if you see the differences of waves, waves are continuous, right? So waves are continuous and waves can be spread out at larger distances. Waves can be spread out in larger distances and waves can be diffracted. 
waves can be diffracted and moreover waves can be interfered that means waves has a property of interference that is what when we speak about the interference of a wave we need to study about the displacement of a wave when we study about the displacement so superposition of two light waves superposition of two light waves will gives rise to interference at the same time the bending phenomena of light wave means the bending phenomena of light is what we call it as the diffraction so here we can differentiate between the amplitude and light as a division of amplitude and definition uh, division of light right so that is what we understand so diffraction waves can be diffracted waves can be interfered and moreover waves need a medium to propagate right if waves need a medium to propagate that medium will determine the speed of a wave that medium will determine the speed of a wave so this is what we understand between the particles and wave and if you see here we have a particles and wave reflected by some mirrors right so this is what we can see the particles and waves reflected by some mirrors right so that is what we understand the particles and waves right so particles are quantized particles can be localized so these are some of the properties of particles right particles are quantized particles can be localized particles can exhibit no, uh, no diffraction they can be uh, particles do not show interference and particles can move through empty space at any speed and waves spread out at uh, waves have some characteristics like waves are continuous wave can spread out it uh, wave can spread out at larger dis uh, larger distances right and there can waves can be diffracted and waves are interfered and waves need some medium to propagate where we can find the velocity of a wave or speed of a wave right so based on this de broglie has given as we told in 1923 1923 de broglie has given such an idea in 1923 de broglie has given an idea by proposing his hypothesis his hypothesis a hypothesis has come from the fact that nature loves symmetry from the fact that nature loves symmetry right nature loves symmetry so this hypothesis of de broglie de broglie's hypothesis so, so what he, this person the de broglie has given he started explaining the wave particle duality wave particle duality so that means he told he has given such an explanation that light is having dual nature he has started giving such an explanation that light has dual nature that means every moving matter every moving matter has some associated wave so every moving matter having associated in the sense as we told the as we told that um, the particles of matter that as we told the particles of matter can behave as both waves and particles just like light as uh, that is what the wave phenomena that is what the de broglie hypothesis states that particles of matter particles of matter can behave as both waves and particles just like light so the, in this in uh, in this phenomena we can tell that light has dual nature that means every moving matter every moving matter has some associated wave so the wave associated with this moving particle is known as matter wave or de broglie wave since we are talking about the wave so this de broglie wave or matter wave should be associated with some sort of wavelength right so the wavelength proposed by de broglie wave is given by lambda equals to h by p the wavelength proposed by uh, de broglie because why we are talking about de broglie why we are talking about the wavelength in the sense that we are telling that the wave associated with the moving particle is a matter wave since it is a moving since it is a matter wave it should possess some sort of wave like characteristic that one of the wave like characteristic is what we are calling it as the wavelength and the uh, the wavelength proposed by matter wave or de broglie wave we are writing it as lambda equals to h by p where p is the momentum which we can write h equals to m by v right so this factor is what we call it as or this phenomena is what we call it as a de broglie hypothesis so this hypothesis he has taken this hypothesis has been obtained or he got the idea of or he got the idea of framing the hypothesis by a point on nature law symmetry right so the de broglie hypothesis states that particles of matter just like can behave as both waves and particles just like light and light has dual nature right so light having dual nature in the sense every moving matter has a associated wave the wave associated with the moving particle is known as matter wave or de broglie wave right so this uh, this is what the hypothesis so as you told since uh, every matter wave since as you told that uh, matter wave or de broglie wave should be possessed the matter wave or de broglie wave should possess some sort of wavelength right so that wavelength is what we now we need to write as lambda equals to h by mv lambda equals to h by mv so every de broglie wave or a 
every wave should should, uh, should be characterized by some uh, wavelength right so it should be characterized by some wavelength right so that wavelength should be proposed that wavelength is what we call it as a deep ugly wavelength. So the expression of the wavelength associated with the particle particle can be derived based on the radiation, right? So the expression for the deep ugly wave, the expression for the deep ugly wave can be proposed by uh, proposed can be proposed based on the explanation given by uh, radiation. So that means the expression for deep ugly wavelength can be taken by the radiation. Right? The analogy of radiation, that's right. So, this radiation can be a Planck's theory, right? So, that's what we consider Planck's theory, where we have uh, the energy E equals to H nu, energy e equals to H nu, which we are writing it as Hc by lambda, right? So, if you consider the Planck's theory, the energy of a photon, so that is what E equals to H nu is called the energy of a photon, right? So, the E is equal to H nu is the energy of a photon, which we are writing it as Hc by lambda. So, this energy of photon, this energy of photon should be quantized, right? That's why we are writing the energy of photon in quantum is given as E equals to H nu, H nu is equal to Hc by lambda, where C is the velocity of light and light in vacuum, right? So, here C is the velocity of light in vacuum, C is the velocity of light in vacuum, velocity of light in vacuum, vacuum and lambda is its wavelength, lambda is its wavelength, right. So, this is what we understand when we take the Planck's theory of radiation and take the radiation is quantized, if you take that radiation is quantized, then energy where the radiation is quantized is given in the form of photon, that is what we are writing E equals to H nu, H C by lambda, where C is the velocity of light in vacuum and lambda is its wavelength. So, this should be because uh, because this is an interaction of light with matter right so when we are talking about the interaction of light with matter we need to uh, we need to go for uh, the einstein mass energy relation we need to go for einstein mass energy relation that is what the einstein photoelectric uh, that is what we are writing e equals to mc square right so this is what the einstein mass energy relation so when we write according to einstein's uh, mass energy relation we have e equals to mc square so so, E equals to mc square, which we are writing it as lambda equals to E equals to h nu. See, if you write E equals to h nu, so E equals to h c by lambda, right. So, according to Einstein's mass energy relation, so we have E equals to mc square. So, lambda equals to h by mc, which equals to h by p. Because mass, m is a mass, c is a velocity, the product of mass and velocity will give rise to momentum, right? Where this momentum, this momentum p, where p is the momentum, it should be associated with the photon, it should be associated with photon, right? So, lambda e equals to h nu, hc by lambda. So, according to our mass and energy relation, we have e equals to mc square and lambda equals to uh, h by mc, right? h by mc. And mass into velocity is what we write it as the momentum, and this momentum is associated with photon. That's what where mc equals to p is momentum associated with photon, right? So if you consider in the case of material particle, right? If you consider the material particle, if you consider the case for material particle of mass m and moving with velocity v, that is momentum is mass into velocity, momentum is mass into velocity. So here we are considering it as a photon, right? So we because we are considering the Planck's theory of radiation, energy of photon is given by E equals to H nu, and we converted energy mass uh, relation and we obtained mc equals to p is the momentum associated with photon, right? So now we are considering the case for a material particle, right? So material particle of mass m moving with velocity v, then the momentum associated is m into v, right? So where v is the velocity of the particle. Now, here m is the mass of the particle, m mass of the particle and v is the velocity of the particle. So, based upon that analogy, in an analog in an analogous to wavelength associated with photon, we have lambda equals to h by mv. Here, we have lambda equals to h by mc. Here, we have lambda equals to h by mv which we are writing it as h by p here it is related to the material particle where here it is related to the photon right so that is what mc is the momentum put associated with photon here now it is associated with the material particle right so this is what uh, mm, 
So based on this, right, based on this, we need to derive the wavelength, right? So how do you derive those? That is what lambda equals h by mv, right? Now, if you take, uh, so what, uh, in, in order to derive the expression, in order to derive the expression for wavelength, because we know that when we are uh, proposing, a when we are proposing, the, when we are proposing a new wave, where matter wave, so this matter wave should have some sort of wavelength. So, this matter waves are proposed by de Broglie, so wavelength associated with that wave is what we call it as de Broglie wavelength. So, to derive the expression for de Broglie wavelength, and if we take E is the energy, kinetic energy of the material particle, then we have E equals to half mv square, E equals to half mv square, E equals to half mv square, right? So, this equals to half m square v square by m. Right, so this equals to half or 1 by 2 m. m square v square can be written as p square, that means E equals to p square by 2 m. So, this is the relation between energy and momentum of the material particle. This energy should be the kinetic energy, therefore, we are writing p equals to 2 m e, p square equals to 2 m e, or p equals to we can write under root 2 m e. So, this is a relation between the kinetic energy and momentum of a wave, of a material particle. So, when we substitute P equals to under root of 2 and E for a material particle associated with the de Broglie wave that is lambda equals to H by P or H by MV, right? So, this expression can be written as H by P is what we can write it as under root 2 MV. So, this is a various relation, therefore, the de Broglie wavelength is giving the relation is also giving the relation between lambda and the energy wavelength and energy, right? Where E is the total energy of the material particle, right? So, this is what we understand the de Broglie wavelength, de Broglie wavelength. So, de Broglie, de Broglie wavelength for material particle. So, if you take so, this is what the material particle, this material particle as we told as proposed, the generalized proposed by Einstein, if it is uh, generalized notably to electrons, then if you take, if you take when a charged particle uh, carrying a charge Q is accelerated by some potential difference, then the kinetic energy associated with that is given by E equals to small q into V, where Q is a charge and V is the potential difference. Here V is the velocity, now V is the potential difference. Then the kinetic energy is given by E equals to small q into E. So therefore, we write lambda equals to H by under root 2m q V, where Q is the charge of the material particle and V is the potential difference, potential difference in which the particle can be accelerated. The potential, the where V is the potential difference applied for the electron so that the charge can get accelerated. That's why when a charging particle carrying a charge Q is accelerated by some potential, then the kinetic energy associated with that is given by E equals to Q into V. In that case, the de Broglie wavelength can be written as lambda equals to H by under root small 2m into Q V. So, if you substitute these values, H equals to 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 27 x per second by under root of 2 into mass of the particle 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg into charge 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs into V. V is the potential where we need to find it out, right? So, the wavelength associated with is given by lambda equals to 12.21 under root V. So, this is what the wavelength uh, persists, uh, this is what the de Broglie wavelength proposed associated with this particle. If you substitute the parameters, if you substitute the parameters like h value, mass of the electron, because this is applied, this is applicable when we apply uh, the wavelength associated for Ma when we associated for the electron because we know certain parameters like electron that's why we are acting h is a Planck's constant and m is the mass of the electron and q is the charge of the electron and potential difference we need to see how with how much potential difference that particular electron can get accelerated so in that criteria if you substitute these parameters we get lambda equals to 12.21 by 12.21 under root v
So this is what the expression for de Broglie wavelength in terms of the charged particles, in terms of the material particles, right? So in terms of material particles, so when we when we start, the, so de Broglie wavelength uh, associated with material particles, it should be imparted with energy. That is what we are writing lambda equals to h by under root two m b. Here we are we are writing it as lambda equals to h by under root two m q. We see in the next sessions. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.